In previous chapters, we learned the graphical method, simplest method, and duality theory for solving linear programming problems. For example, if we have the following problem, we can use the graphical method to obtain the optimal solution by either checking the values of the objective function obtained by each vertex of the feasible region. Or by moving the level sets of the objective function towards increasing value. In this example, the objective function has a maximum value of forty-eight, which is achieved when x equals to zero and y equals to one point six. We can also solve this problem by the simplest method. However, in general, it is more difficult to solve. Integer linear programming problem. Although we only consider problems having two decision variables in this chapter, so we can solve and illustrate the problems by graphical method. In general, when we have more decision variables, graphical method may not be applicable, and it is more difficult to solve the problem. For example, let's consider this integer linear programming problem. It is a pure integer programming problem. You can observe that its LP relaxation is the problem we have just mentioned above, and the solution of this LP relaxation occurs at the vertex zero one point six. If both the x and y coordinates of this point were integers. Then this point would also be an optimal solution to the ILP problem as well. However, now it is not. This point, in fact, doesn't satisfy the ILP problem. You may wonder: Can we just round the coordinates to the nearest integer and claim that the result obtained is the optimal point of the ILP problem? The answer is no, and we shall illustrate as follows. For our ILP problem, the points that satisfy all constraints are zero 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 one one zero one one two zero and three zero. If we round down the vertex zero one point six to the nearest integer, we will get zero one. However, by checking all the points. We found that the point zero one is not giving the greatest optimal value. Instead, the point one one gives the greatest value for the objective function. So one one is the optimal point of the ILP problem, but not the point zero one. If we round up the vertex zero one point six, we will get zero two. However, this point is not even in the feasible set of both the ILP problem as well as the LP relaxation. In other words, this point zero two doesn't fulfill all constraints in the ILP problem. As a conclusion, the optimal point of the ILP problem is not necessarily the round up. Or the round down of the optimal point from the LP relaxation. In the following, we shall discuss how to solve pure integer programming problems. Theoretically, we can solve pure integer programming problems by checking each of the points inside the feasible set to see which point gives the greatest value for the objective function. However, this is very time-consuming. We shall present the branch and bound method. It is a widely used method in solving integer linear programming problems. Roughly speaking, the branch and bound method solves the integer linear programming problem by splitting the feasible region of the LP relaxation into smaller subsets successively. That is. Branching into subproblems successively and solve the subproblems accordingly.
It is best to learn this method by using examples. In this chapter, we shall only consider ILP problems with two decision variables so that it is easier to visualize the method. However, this method is widely used to solve problems involving more variables that graphical methods can be applicable. Let's refer again to this pure integer programming problem. If we check all the points in the feasible set of this integer programming problem, we know that the objective function has a maximum value of 40, which is achieved at the point 1, 1. So 1, 1 is the optimal point. Or if we move the level set of the objective function towards increasing value, the point 1, 1 is the last point in the feasible set that the line touches. So 1, 1 is the optimal point. Now, let's solve the same problem by the branch and bound method. First, instead of solving the ILP problem, we solve the LP relaxation. In this case, we need to solve this system. You can use any method you learned in previous chapter for that. Suppose we use graphical method to solve it and get that the objective function has a maximum value of 48 achieved at the point 0, 1.6. We check whether the point obtained in this step already fulfills the integer constraints of the ILP problem. Here, x equals to 0 is an integer, but y equals to 1.6 is not yet an integer, but is required in our ILP problem. So we need to proceed further. Since y is now 1.6, but it should be an integer, y should be either less than or equals to 1, or greater than or equals to 2. Therefore, we split the LP relaxation into two subproblems. The first subproblem is to impose the additional constraint y less than or equals to 1 to the existing LP relaxation. The second subproblem is to impose the additional constraint y greater than or equals to 2 to the existing LP relaxation. We hope that this time we manage to get a point which fulfills the condition that both x and y are integers. We can denote the first subproblem with inequality y less than or equals to 1 as p sub a and denotes the second subproblem with inequality y greater than or equals to 2 as p sub b. Although we no longer consider those points with y coordinates between 1 to 2, we will not miss any points for our ILP problem because those points do not have integer y coordinates. Therefore, the optimal point of the ILP problem is still contained in either the feasible region of P sub A or the feasible region of P sub B. We proceed to solve P sub A using any method we have learned in previous chapters. The system is to maximize this objective function subject to the constraint 5x plus 10y less than or equal to 16, y less than or equal to 1, and both x and y are non-negative. This fielded region here is the feasible region for P sub A. By graphical method, we get that the objective function has a maximum value of 42 achieved at the point 1.21. This time y is an integer, but x is not. The point is not a solution to the ILP problem. There are studies on whether we should solve p sub b first, or whether we should further split p sub a into two subproblems and solve the subproblem first. Different strategies will make a difference on the amount of computation time and the memory required. In this example, 
Let us solve P sub B before splitting P sub A into two subproblems. For the subproblem P sub B, the system is to maximize this objective function subject to 3x plus 10y less than or equal to 16 and y is greater than or equal to 2 where x and y are non-negative. It is to have the additional constraint that y is greater than or equal to 2 on top of the LP relaxation. We observe from the graph that the feasible set for P sub B is empty, so P sub B is infeasible. Therefore, we have finished considering this node. We do not need to branch it further. For P sub A, we have got the optimal point 1.21. Since x is not an integer, we should split P sub A into two subproblems with the constraint x less than or equals to 1 and x greater than or equals to 2 respectively. Let us denote the first subproblem of P sub A as P sub A A and the second subproblem of P sub A as P sub A B. This is the objective function and the constraint for the subproblem P sub A A. Please note that since P sub A A is the subproblem of P sub A, so we are not forming this by just adding the constraint x less than or equal to 1 on top of the LP relaxation. We are actually forming this problem P sub A A by adding the constraint x is less than or equal to 1 on top of the system P sub A. So we also have the constraint y is less than or equal to 1 here. Similarly, for the subproblem P sub A B, it is formed by adding the constraint x is greater than or equal to 2 on top of the system P sub A. Therefore, it also has the constraint y is less than or equal to 1 here. The feasible region of P sub A A and P sub A B are shown in the diagram respectively. There is also one thing we can notice. We have obtained a maximum value of z equals to 42 from P sub A. Since the subproblems P sub A A and P sub A B are having extra constraints on top of P sub A, therefore the maximum value obtained by P sub A A and P sub A B will be bounded above by 42. This gives us an idea on the upper bound on the maximum objective value we expect to get from P sub A A and P sub A B. Let us now solve the subproblem P sub A A. It has a maximum value of z equals to 40, which is achieved when x equals to 1 and y equals to 1. This time the point 1 1 satisfies the constraints to have both x and y as integers. So it satisfies all the constraints in the ILP problem. Thus, we have found a solution to the ILP problem and we do not need to further split P sub A A into two subproblems. However, we are not sure yet whether this point gives the optimal value for Z to the ILP problem because there is still P sub A B we haven't considered yet. We just bear in mind that so far the point 1 1 gives the highest objective value Z equals to 40 in our ILP problem. Now let us solve the subproblem P sub A B. It has a maximum value of z equals to 38, which is achieved when having x equals to 2, 
y equals to zero point six. This time, y equals to zero point six doesn't satisfy the integer constraint in the ILP problem. So this point is not a solution to the ILP problem. Do you think we should split the problem P sub A B into two sub problems? The answer is no for this time. It is because we observe that P sub A B has a maximum objective value of z equals to 38. So even if we split it into two sub problems, the maximum objective value is that obtained in its subproblems will not be higher than 38. We have already got the point 1 1 from another note P sub AA, which satisfy the ILP problem and use a higher value is that equals to 40 than is that equals to 38 here. Therefore, we do not need to make branches to P sub AB further. Since there is no other note we need to branch further, we have finished the procedure. In our situation, we have found that the point 1 1 satisfied the ILP problem and gives the maximum objective value is that equals to 40. Thus, it is the optimal point to the ILP problem, and the ILP problem has a maximum value of z equals to 40 for the objective function. To summarize, by branch and bound method, the ILP problem has a maximum value of z equals to 40 for its objective function, achieved when taking x equals to 1 y equals to 1. The following tree diagram gives us the process and solutions obtained in each stage. The orange number indicates the sequence of dealing with each subproblem in our deduction. As a remark, there is another common algorithm of solving the same problem. This algorithm has a preference of solving the subproblem which is at a deeper level first. With this algorithm, it begins with solving the LP relaxation and branching it into subproblems P sub A and P sub B. Next, it solves P sub A and branch it into subproblems P sub AA and P sub AB. Now, instead of solving subproblem P sub B first, it will solve subproblem P sub AA. Since there is no need to branch P sub AA, it then solves the subproblem P sub AB. And since there are solutions from P sub AA which satisfies all the constraints in the ILP problem, gives higher objective value from that in P sub AB, there is no need to further branch P sub AB. Then this algorithm returns back to P sub B and solve P sub B. Different algorithms will have different computation time and memory used. No matter which algorithms we use, we will obtain the same optimal solutions to the ILP problem.